Hey everyone, welcome to your fourth DNA Master tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you guys the basics of DNA Master. I'll show you around the program, show you how to access all the tools that you'll be needing, and just show you how the program is laid out. It's very important that you can get a basic understanding of the program before diving into your annotation. In the last tutorial, we ran the auto annotation process and it gave us all of our genes and laid out our genome for us. So you're almost there, you're almost ready to go, but not quite. So let's get into the basic features of DNA Master. So after you run the auto annotation feature of the program, you'll get a uh, window like this. It has the notes that you copied into the uh, auto annotation tab and they're available under every single gene. The first thing you want to notice is that there's now a genome map in the bottom portion of the screen. These little green bars and red bars are actually genes. The green genes are transcribed from left to right or forward genes and the reverse genes in red are transcribed from right to left. So as you can see we have 110 features or 110 genes that were called on consensus by three different bioinformatic programs and they were placed into our genome. So let's get started with the bottom here. Basically, if you mouse over your genome, you'll see the position number change right here, this position. Um, it will tell you the coordinate of that um, gene. There you can see the um, position increasing as we move towards the end of our genome. So pretty much wherever your mouse is, it will give you that base pair coordinate in the position here. This is just the window of um, the base pairs available in the bottom map here. So it's starting at 1 and ending at 35,048. If we want to zoom in closer, simply use the magnifying glass here and you can see it gets in closer. If you want to scroll left, um, this will do it. This will do um, a very small scroll to the left. If you want a bigger scroll, um, hit the big one, the, the bigger one here, the double arrow, um, and likewise on the right side. And if you want to move all the way to the end of the genome, hit this arrow with the line next to it and that will bring you all the way to the end. Likewise for the left, this will bring you all the way back to the beginning. So that's kind of how you move around your map at the bottom of the screen. If you click on a gene, it will bring it up in the window here. It will bring up gene 22. As you saw, I clicked that one and gene 22 came up in the notes. When working in DNA Master and starting your annotation, you'll definitely want to widen the feature list here. This is the feature list because it is missing two columns without it widened. So all you have to do is come up to the top here where the title is. Uh, where the name, the five prime end, and the length are, simply right click and hit widen feature list. This will give you the name of um, the gene, the number, the start site, stop site, and the length. You can also hit this arrow to take that little toolbar away and your window will now look like this. Next we'll move over to the documentation tab. If you watched last tutorial you'll know that you have to recreate the documentation each time you save so you may be a little bit familiar with how this is laid out but pretty much you're not going to be working in the documentation tab too much but it's good to know just how it's laid out. So this is the coding sequence here from base pair 1 to 660. It's called gene 1, the product is gene product 1, and the locus tag is uh, your phage name and the number. So it's just going to copy the note section of that gene into the documentation tab only after you recreated it. Like I said, you're not going to be working in here too much, so not to worry about the documentation too much. All right, let's get into the most important parts here. So you're going to be working in this window most frequently. This is the feature list here, and these are each and every one of your genes. So all you have to do if you want to move from gene to gene is simply just click it and you'll see this arrow move. You'll click as you'll go down, you'll annotate each gene by populating the notes section and filling out these different categories or information. And then you'll simply hit post and move on to the next one. So you can just keep clicking from gene to gene. Uh, if you want to you know, scroll down, you can eventually scroll down. With this, obviously, you can just click around and that will bring you up each gene. Now let's get into the tabs of each gene. So we'll start with the top one here. As you'll see here, there are five or six different tabs, excuse me, up at the top. There's description, which will give you um, the note section that you have to fill out. And that's pretty much all you have to worry about on this one. There's also a function section. We'll worry about that later. But if you go over to the sequence tab, this will give you the A, T, G's, and C's of your sequence for that gene. So this is what um, those bioinformatic tools put together and believe to be a gene and this is the sequence of it. If you want the product, you click the product tab, it tells you how many amino acids are in this gene. So here 220 residues or amino acid um, are present in this gene. 
And here is the amino acid sequence, as you'll see here. These are all the different um, sequences of that. So this product tab will be especially important when you're blasting or putting these into databases to match up um, to see if there's a possible function for your gene. We will skip the region section for now. We'll go to the blast section. This is where you can view your blast results that you did if you uh, ran blast with the auto annotation process. If you did not run blasts like I didn't in the past tutorial, all of your genes will be empty for this section. This will show no blast results. However, like I said, if you did take the extra time to blast it, you, sh you should have a list of blast results here and that will tell you, you know, um, different values of uh, different things and we'll get into that at a later date but you may notice even if you blasted your genome some of the gene some of the blast tabs are empty this means that there were no good results for that blast result and DNA master didn't copy back any of those results so usually if you did blast your whole genome and this shows up it means that there weren't any good blast results you can also try again by hitting blast this gene and it will send a blast request to the server, take a little bit of time, and after some time you'll get your blast results in a separate window in which you can save to the DNA master program as many as you want. So we'll save three values for now, close out, and we'll click off the gene, click back on, and you'll see here these are the blast results. And here's all the information and alignment and everything like that. Like I said, don't worry about it too much now, we'll go into more detail in a separate tutorial. Also another common thing that you might come across while doing your annotation is you may need a specific sequence um, at a certain you know, uh, base pair or something like that. All you have to do to do that is just click over here in the sequence tab and you can just scroll up and down um, and get the sequence at any point. Uh, here it'll tell you the position and everything like that. So it is pretty uh, useful when looking at specific sequences. Another thing you'll have to do for every gene during the annotation process is the SD score and the longest open reading frame. This requires a separate window for you to open each time. All you have to do to open that window is head up here into DNA and scroll down to here where it says frame. When you click frames, this separate window will pop up. Make sure you post changes before opening frames because you will lose that data if you didn't post your changes. Now this can look a little bit confusing, but just know that these are the different open reading frames. So this is the plus one, plus two, plus three or the forward and these are the minus one, minus two, minus three open reading frames. The next thing you'll want to do is click this little button here, the ORFS or the ORFS button. Click that and it will show you the genes in your genome where they're at. Obviously all of the forward genes are in the open reading frames in the plus one, plus two, and plus three. If you look closely, these bars that take up the full row, these are possible stop codons and these bars that take up only half of the rows these are possible start codons so you'll see a lot of possibilities and that's you know one reason why it's only 90 percent accurate there's so many possibilities for different start sites different stop sites and things like that so it may be a little more difficult um, to fully get it 100 percent accurate but that's what your goal is again as we mouse through the genome you can see in the bottom left hand corner of this window the base pair number corresponds to wherever your cursor is so that might be useful in locating a specific base pair coordinate. Also again you can utilize the zoom in, zoom out, and pan across um, the genome to locate the gene that you're looking for. Now what's the point of this whole window here? Why, why does it matter? Um, pretty much for every gene like I said you'll have to go to this window and click on that gene that you're working on. Say we're working on five so we'll click on number five and we're going to click the RBS button. As you'll see, when we clicked it, this little green bar came up over top of it. Um, all we have to do is click the RBS button and it will give us a separate window. This window is where you will get your final score for your SD. This is the score that you would copy into the notes sections. Additionally, it'll give you the start code on, the start position, and the open reading frame length. So this information will need to be accessed for each gene and copied into the notes section depending on which start site you choose. Now later on when you're kind of refining your annotation and you're looking through to see which start sites are potentially the best ones, it may be helpful to have all three of these frames open at once, as you'll see me do in just a second, as I maneuver these things around and make it a little bit easier to work with. So this may be uh, something that you want to do. So say if we're working on Gene 5, we can have the window open here that shows all the potential start sites, the open reading frame length, and the SD scores, 
as well we can have uh, this open up here which shows potential start sites and stop sites as well so it is all useful to have these three open at once we'll get into more detail later this is just an overview so that was the frames we can close out of that for now and open back up our main here the last thing I want to show you guys for this tutorial is how to create a six frame translation map and how to export a map of your genome to do that we simply go up here to DNA and click export map we can uh, change some settings if you would like you can save it by hitting draw map and we'll save it to our desktop we'll call it uh, convoy map and then I'll show you guys exactly what that did so DNA master has this cool built-in feature that opens up or creates a map of your genome just like this it's just useful to have or useful to know how to do the last thing I wanted to show you guys is the six frame translation so likewise go up into genome and scroll down here to six frame translation again we can click the ORFS button which will show you the amino acid sequence for your genes the things that are highlighted are your genes obviously so um, Here's the start site. It gives you the sequence here uh, in A, T, C's, and G's, and it also gives you the amino acid sequence. So this is very useful, especially when trying to find um, frame shift mutations. You can also export this map to an RTF file. You can save that to the desktop as well, and then open that up in a different program if we would like. But that's pretty much it guys that's the basics of dna master hopefully from this tutorial you gained a basic understanding of how dna master works and how to pretty much navigate the program and um, just know the basics for when you start your annotation process so thanks for watching guys if you have any questions as always leave them in the comments i will do my best to help you out i hope you found this tutorial useful thanks for watching